I think we're all pretty well aware of what was going on in late 2020. Uh, nothing good. I don't know what that ship looks like. There are books I like. I read Six of Crows and loved it. Welcome back to the crypt. Today we're going to go ahead and tackle the book Cyborg Tinkerer. So this book launched in late 2020 and honestly I don't feel like I need to go over world events or anything. I think we're all pretty well aware of what was going on in late 2020. Uh, nothing good. Uh, so in addition to the personal pan pizza that was going on, there was a lot of political upheaval going on. I personally don't think the book reflects much to any of it. I will say, however, that while this is a problem, like last week I talked about uh, dystopian and my problem with it and how this makes characters bland. I will give credit where it's due. With political discourse, I think there were... Let me check my notes to double check. Yeah, there were two characters that did talk a little bit at one point, I can't remember which scene it was, but I feel like there were two or three characters that did like mention, there was mentioning of, you know, what if the emperor doesn't change his ways or like, what if he does, will that even matter? Because the reality was a bunch of the actual citizens that were around them, I think they were at the Capitol or something near the end of the book. The citizens themselves were just so incredibly, incredibly judgmental and hateful towards cyborgs just in general. They just, the propaganda had done its worst and people truly believed it. So it wasn't just the big bad guy who was bad. It's like, even if he's taken out, all these citizens hate our guts. So where does that lead us? And this, this is why even though I've, I've got some beef with this book we're going to get into in a second. I actually enjoyed this book more than I did a lot of other books I've read this year. It's not my favorite book this year by any stretch of the imagination, but it was better than a lot of others I'd read, which is shocking considering some of the massive problems I'll get to. But I think it's because even though it had that like big bad guy controlling everything, it had spiraled out of control to where the characters were somewhat aware that it's not just the big bad guy who's a problem, it's the citizens themselves and they hate us. So even if we defeat this one guy, it won't matter. It's only kind of in passing and I feel like it's not talked about as well as it could, but I still very much appreciate that there are two characters that acknowledge the little bit of the problem. I want to make it very clear that I think there are, I, I don't think this book was completely untouched from it, but I do think this book distances itself generally. There are no firm political stances made in this book that I can see. We have chronological order. Good, great, we love to see it. That being said, I've um, got to address the giant elephant in the room and the biggest issue I had with this book. And that would be, where are we? Descriptors were few and far in between. There were almost no descriptors given to where we are, like actual placement and setting. So we would have characters talking and then like suddenly a character would start walking down the stairs and I would be like, wait, there were stairs in, weren't they outside? They were outside though, right? They were outside, are they inside? I would get confused. I remember flipping through pages, trying to find context for where the characters physically were, their physical placement because there was so little description. And considering that this is a steampunk book, I was kind of surprised by that because in most steampunky books, like a lot of it is the aesthetics. They would describe things like someone's dress, like the love interest dress and how sparkly it was and the cut of it and how her body seemed to look underneath it, and it was blah, 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 which is fine. But I need that dedication and I need you to put it in where are we? Are we outside? Are we inside? The characters were in this like void most of the time. So it, the best way I can describe reading that book, how it felt, you, you have your character and the character was well described. So no problems there. So the character was well described. You got this character in this game, like a game field, right? And your character is here, you can see her, but then like you can only see items that were in like five feet of her maybe. 
and they're a little pixelated because it didn't res proper but it's like kind of there but they're kind of blocky but then everything past that is just fog like it looks like a tree maybe it's a it's a green pixelized blob over there is it a tree is it a dragon is it my grandpa i don't know no one knows because it didn't load proper that's what this book felt like the entire book if i'm thinking in my head trying to imagine like the ship i don't know what that ship looks like like I, I can't if there was a description it was bland and it was forgettable but i don't think there really was show me this what does it look what does anything look like that's not the main character or love interest dress characters i don't hate any of them first off um but that being said i also don't love any of them for the main character, I felt she was pretty like standard. I, I actually kind of like the beginning, how her mindset very forcibly goes from I want to die to, oh my God, I kind of want to live, but how do I do that? Like, I actually think that was pretty well done near the beginning, but I started losing her as a character about halfway through because she became very obsessed with her love interests. Some of the show scenes that were really good were like good. And I think they were handled well, like a lot of the stuff at the very beginning, some of the scenes with um, her, you know, getting through some of the more brutal things she had to as a character with the villains. I think that was pretty well handled. Um, but some of the, like the stuff in between, it felt like almost like filler sometimes. Like I felt like I was reading filler. But yeah, but because of all that, like I never feel like I felt connected to any of the characters at all. None of them clicked with me at all. Not a single solitary character, not even a side character, just nothing. Um, the overall message of this is a little hard to discern. Like I said at the beginning, I don't think there was a political message, which is probably for the best considering the year it came out in. It is forward thinking in that one, polyamory comes into play eventually, and two, the characters are different genders and their expression of gender is a little different from each other and that's i think that was pretty cool it was handled normally like it wasn't weird in that world there was no call out about it there wasn't any like lectures about sexuality it was just like these are the characters and this is how they feel and no one thinks that's weird and i enjoy that i enjoyed how normalized that was because it shouldn't be weird. How people express their sexuality as well as gender should not be seen as a weird thing. It should be like, if someone's like, this is what I'm into, this is what I'm not, you should be like, cool. And accepting of that. Like, why Why wouldn't you be? Uh, like, it's not like, it doesn't hurt you at all to be respectful to another person. So I liked how that was handled in the book actually. And I really appreciated it. Maybe part of the message could have been you know that not only is life worth living but you like you never know the path you could be taken down like this is a journey and adventure to discover more of what you love and who you are as a person and i think that's actually a pretty cool message i don't i i think it's fine um i just wish the book read a little less like fan fiction and a little bit more like an actual book You read fan fiction especially the ye old fanfiction.net days you know what i'm talking about it, it ends, ends like that if you like that kind of fiction then you'll enjoy the ending and i don't hate the ending that's the thing i don't hate the ending but i didn't love it either it was just kind of like huh okay and i just moved on like i felt nothing i didn't feel joy but i also didn't feel hate or anything like that unlike some dystopian books that have mechs if I would describe this book, it like sits solidly at like 2.5 star. I would give it three if the descriptors weren't absent for most of the book, but like, it's just there. It just kind of sits there. It's a book that sits there and you're like, okay, that's the thing that happened. I don't hate it. I don't hate it um, by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I feel like I liked it better than some of the other books. Like I enjoyed reading it, more than I enjoyed reading Song of Dryad, but it was still, it was still missing stuff. And it still kind of was like hard to read. I still haven't found a book I would consider truly good in this series. And I'm, I'm losing hope guys. I'm, I, I like, there are books I like. I read Six of Crows and loved it. But what about you guys? Did any of you guys read this book? I, it apparently had a little bit of hype behind it, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you read it. Also, let me know what you're reading right now and any recommendations. A good book, it's all I ask. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, 
I'm hoping next year brings something. 